The first step in weed management, and that includes weed reduction and weed prevention, is to pick a grass that does well. We have six species or types of warm season grasses available for use here in Florida and each has multiple examples of cultivars or varieties of, of which we can choose. Picking a grass that does well for the main application can make a big impact in allowing that grass to cover the area, restrict the sunlight from reaching the soil, and prevent weeds from establishing. St. Augustine grass is most widely used in lawns. It has above ground stolons which allow it the ability to cover over and compete with weeds quite effectively and shade them out. If St. Augustine grass is properly mowed, watered, and fertilized, much of the weed problems will be reduced. There are currently four post-emergence broadleaf herbicides for St. Augustine grass in Florida. Of these, atrazine has become much less practical over time because of tightening label restrictions. Metsulfuron has the broadest applicability for killing a wide number of weeds, both sulfentrazone, which is largely a sedge product, as well as sulfosulfuron have good uses on some weeds individually or in combinations. Remember, there are restrictions, and you must read and observe the label attached to the product. And by product, I mean the specific jug in which the herbicide is sold. Also, some of the newer materials, such as metsulfuron and sulfosulfuron, are used in very low quantities of active ingredient, so they must be carefully weighed and measured. For sedges, we have five active ingredients that are formulated in a number of different trade names, and these are quite effective on most species of sedges, although bentazon is usually considered only effective against the um, bunch sedges, whereas the others, sulfosulfuron, sulfentrazone, imazequin, and halosulfuron, are effective against many other kinds of sedges, including the rhizomatous sedges, such as kylinga and purple nut sedge. Unfortunately, we currently do not have any good grass herbicides for use in St. Augustine grass in Florida. Bermuda grass is used in Florida for golf course and sports turf areas. There are a number of species and varieties available, Cynodon, Dactylon, and interspecific hybrids. Bermuda grass responds very well to nitrogen fertilization. This allows it to outgrow stress. It's not particularly wear resistant, but it can recover very well from wear with proper fertilization. This helps close up the canopy and re reduce weed activity. Bahia grass, or Bahia grass, Paspalum notatum, does well in Florida in large landscapes. These would be open, sunny areas and level areas where it does well with relatively little care. However, Bahia grass grows very rapidly in the summertime, requires frequent mowing, it's a relatively coarse and rugged looking grass, and it definitely doesn't do well in shade or in areas in small landscapes such as home lots and um, areas close to buildings. So Bahia grass can do well, but it doesn't do well when it's overmanaged, and winter fertilization, irrigation, that kind of thing can really play havoc on Bahia grass. Centipede grass, shown at the bottom, does well in central Florida and the Panhandle, in contrast to St. Augustine grass at the top, which does well throughout the state. Both centipede grass and St. Augustine grass have only above-ground runners called stolons. They don't have rhizomes, and they can't recover well from injury, such as drought and other stresses. Here is a lawn of centipede grass. This happens to be from homestead area of Florida, and you'll notice that under relatively low fertility, it can hold its own against weeds. Zoysia grass, which came to us from Asia, includes the coarse textured Zoysia japonica and other species and their interspecific hybrids. 
Zoysia grass is relatively slow to establish, but it is hard to get rid of. It has underground rhizomes that provide a ability for zoysia grass to recuperate from injury. It's very fine textured and very attractive. Here is a lawn of zoysia grass at the entrance to Epcot in Disney World. Finally, Seashore Paspalum is a relatively new grass as far as its expansion in golf courses and some other turf grass areas in Florida. It has both stolons and rhizomes. It has excellent salt tolerance and it can be somewhat fickle. On a golf course, Seashore Paspalum provides very good color, particularly in the wintertime. It also provides very good ball lie. One problem is weeds. When weed problems do occur in seashore paspalum, there are few herbicides available. Salt has been used as an herbicide in this species, and it is somewhat effective on a spot treatment basis. Earlier, I mentioned that the response to weeds can be to kill, to prevent, to reduce, to work around, or to ignore. That needs to be balanced by the importance of landscape weeds. Both the largely aesthetic characteristics shown here, as well as more serious things such as toxicity, such as safety issues if weeds block the visibility. Have a good conversation with your client or the owner who employs you to make sure that you can balance the response to weeds with the seriousness. Ideally, cultural management of weeds would be used in many cases, or at least would be the foundation for weed management. There are three parts of this. One is that the weeds have to be there. The weed seed or parts have to be present. There needs to be a conducive environment for weeds to grow, and there needs to be a weak turf canopy for weeds to grow. All three must be present for weeds to establish. If you can use cultural management to break one of these linkages, you will prevent or reduce weeds. Why would cultural management make sense for the landscape? Well, as an example, and I'm just going to talk about fertilization here, fertilization stimulates plant growth. Actively growing plants feed herbivores, which could include lawn caterpillars, chinch bugs, and other species, which can break out in situations where there's been a large flush of nitrogen fertilization herbivores damage the plants and can reduce the turf grass and then fertilizer can help the plants outgrow the damage so fertilization can be both a friend and an enemy of turf grass cultural management on january 1st 2014 you will be required to be certified in the florida green industry's best management practices if you apply fertilizers commercially. This is important not only to protect the Florida environment and to obey the law, but it may be an opportunity for you for your business. The sooner you get involved in this program, the sooner you can establish yourself as a leader in best management practices. Let's look at some specific examples of cultural management of weeds, one of which is most obvious is the fact that reducing irrigation also reduces dollar weed infestation in the St. Augustine grass lawn. Let me show you the research which was based on an objective to evaluate the relationship of irrigation management to dollar weed infestation. In my earlier research work at the University of Florida, I established and planted dollar weed in mixture with St. Augustine grass under 24 different irrigation zones involving daily irrigation, weekly irrigation, and drought-only irrigation. These field areas were also treated with three different levels of fertilization, three different mowing heights. Looking at the original objective to evaluate the relationship of irrigation management to dollar weed infestation, I showed that over three years of irrigation treatments, daily irrigation sustained very high levels of dollar weed 
whereas weekly as needed sustained lower levels of dollar weed and extreme drought irrigation sustained the lowest levels overall of dollar weed. There were no other very strong effects either as far as mowing height or fertilization rate on dollar weed, although other weeds were affected in different ways by irrigation, mowing, and fertilization. No treatment eliminated dollar weed. Therefore, I set out another three years of studies on irrigation management in combination with herbicide treatments. And you're here you see the study in the second three-year phase. Experimental results from these three years of study were consistent with the previous three-year study. As irrigation interval was delayed from two days to four days to six days, dollar weed percent was reduced. There was, however, considerable variability from year to year, and no treatment eliminated dollar weed. Experimental results from herbicides on dollar weed showed that the old standby atrazine was only slightly effective in reducing dollar weed, that certainty was slightly more effective and in combination atrazine plus certainty showed in one case a very good reduction of dollar weed but again it didn't eliminate it. Having looked at the separate results from irrigation and herbicides on dollar weed, now let's look at their combinations. Some individual combinations of irrigation interval and herbicide treatment were successful or totally successful in controlling dollar weed. I consider successful to be 85% reduction or greater. In that standard, atrazine by itself was successful at, under a six-day irrigation interval but in no other situation. The atrazine plus certainty or sulfosulfuron combination was 100% successful at the six-day irrigation interval, whereas no herbicide was successful at the two-day irrigation interval. This seems to be quite common sense. You need to use the best tools available, both cultural management and herbicides, to control weeds. There have been few studies of the cultural management of weeds in turf grasses so we need to go a little farther afield to find indicators of possible relationship. In a four-year study of a cool season species, which is tall fescue, that uh, was mixed with white clover, it was shown that treatments high in nitrogen and low in phosphorus supported grass, whereas treatments high in phosphorus and low in nitrogen supported clover. Basically, grass loves nitrogen and clover loves phosphorus in this study. University of Florida IFAS St. Augustine Grass Lawn recommendations are based on the pre-test of soil phosphorus levels and they show that f for medium and low soil test values that it may be appropriate to apply phosphorus in the fertilizer but above 30 parts per million phosphorus in a malic one extraction, it's inappropriate to apply phosphorus either north or south Florida. This is very interesting considering that sometimes our soils are very high in phosphorus, which as was shown earlier, in other ecosystems is a very uh, big stimulant for cl clovers. Talking more about phosphorus, here is a soil analysis report from a turf area that I had evaluated and we're going to focus on the Malik 3 phosphorus as parts per million phosphorus. Estimated phosphorus based on Malik 3 tends to run about 50 percent higher than Malik 1. Even so, the values reported here, 505 and 240 parts per million phosphorus, are 5 to 10 times higher than the required level to justify phosphorus fertilization. These soils are way too high in phosphorus and no phosphorus is needed. In fact, some weed problems may be worse using any more phosphorus than this already has. 
to make cultural management work in lawns and other turf grass areas requires client education. It requires coordination and communication because if it involves the irrigation system, either the owner or other professionals managing the landscape may have to get involved. Cultural management is not as dramatic as chemical annihilation, and yet it can not only save money through unnecessary fertilizer use, but it can also save on pesticide use. Before entering into an agreement to do cultural management work for weed control in St. Augustine grass or other turf grasses, one needs to manage expectations. And by that I mean the client or the owner needs to realize that there may be some weeds present. Cultural management for St. Augustine grass works well with consistent and careful mowing. My three-year study of dollar weeds showed that many other weeds came in areas that were mowed too high or too low. It also involves consistent and uniform irrigation. The plots that received very infrequent irrigation actually had more of other kind of weeds than the plots that were mowed or, or irrigated on a weekly basis. And also frequent light fertilization as allowed makes perfect sense and that may vary depending upon county regulations as well as the best management practices statewide. The best weed management of St. Augustine grass starts with good cultural management. If you have the opportunity to install a new St. Augustine grass area, make sure to select the proper cultivar for the area and to provide soil and seedbed preparation to prevent weeds or reduce the weeds that are already present. Mow St. Augustine grass at about three and a half inches in height with a sharp mower blade every 10 to 14 days. Lower than that can damage the grass, although there are some dwarf varieties that tolerate slightly less mowing height. Water St. Augustine grass at about three quarters of an inch once or twice a week when it's not raining and when you are allowed to do so by local and um, water management district authorities. This should re-wet the root zone and replenish the water lost to evapotranspiration. It does not say that here, but you must use a, either a rain shut off device or some uh, soil moisture sensor to shut off uh, w w when it's raining or the soil is already wet. It is generally best to fertilize St. Augustine grass at about three to four pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet per year. Half a pound of nitrogen should be the most that would be applied at any one application. The goal is not to green up the grass. The goal is to keep the St. Augustine grass growing at a relatively slow rate but a steady rate to resist weeds. Other nutrients might be added depending upon soil tests, but some, like phosphorus, are not needed in many situations, so all the more reason to test your soil before fertilizing. And finally, protect your St. Augustine grass by monitoring and controlling other pests as needed because an infestation with lawn caterpillars or chinch bugs can weaken the grass and create voids for weeds to get in. The best weed management in St. Augustine grass starts with good cultural management to reduce or prevent weeds in the first place. If you have an opportunity to install a new St. Augustine grass area, select an appropriate cultivar, and conduct careful soil and seedbed preparation to prevent weeds. Mow a St. Augustine grass at about three and a half inches height with a sharp mower blade every 10 to 14 days, returning clippings to the lawn. Sometimes dwarf cultivars can be mown a little bit closer than three and a half inches, but never mow a grass in the shade too close or severe damage will occur, followed by weed infestation. Uniform irrigation is the biggest key to watering St. Augustine grass. Check the irrigation uniformity with a cup catchment test. Irrigate the lawn after early signs of wilt with a half to one to three quarters of an inch to replace the e evapotranspiration and water when rain is not expected. Or set automatic timers to once per week with a rain shutoff device or moisture sensor, which is required by law and observe local ordinances and other water restrictions.
fertilize your St. Augustine grass with two to three pounds nitrogen per thousand square feet per year if it is a normal lawn. It is suggested that a half a pound of nitrogen per application would be applied, which would be a form of spoon feeding, and other nutrients uh, applied if indicated by soil tests. Observe all local fertilization ordinances and do get certified. Finally, protect St. Augustine grass by monitoring and controlling pests as needed. Chinch bugs and webworms can destroy a lawn and uh, make it very prone to weed infestation. The best weed management of St. Augustine grass is cultural management to reduce or prevent weeds in the first place. If you have a chance to install a new St. Augustine grass area, make sure to select an appropriate cultivar and conduct careful soil and seedbed preparation to pre prevent weeds. Mow at about three and a half inches in height with a sharp mower blade every 10 to 14 days, returning clippings to the lawn. Sometimes dwarf cultivars can be mown a little closer, but be very careful. Especially don't mow too close in the shade and really don't mow St. Augustine grass too close at all, or if you do, you will injure it and crabgrasses will typically come in. Water St. Augustine grass appropriately, but first check the uniformity of the irrigation with a cup catchment test. Then plan to irrigate, as long as rain is not expected, after early signs of wilt occur, watering a half to three quarters of an inch to replace the evapotranspiration or water use by the plant. You can also set automatic timers to once a week with a rain shutoff device or a moisture sensor as required by law. Observe all other local ordinances and other water restrictions. Fertilize St. Augustine grass if it is a normal lawn with two to three pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet per year. And remember, this is not to maintain color, but it is to maintain a steady and slow growth weight great to, to combat weeds. I suggest a half a pound of nitrogen per application, which be a form of spoon feeding, and apply other nutrients if indicated by soil tests. Again, observe all ordinances and make sure to get certified. Finally, protect your lawn by monitoring and controlling pests as needed. Thanks for joining me to find out about the identifying characteristics and the management of common landscape weeds. If there's anything I can do for you, please email me at phil at philbusey.com. Have a nice rest of your day. Bye-bye. I'm Phil Busey of Phil Busey Agronomy Consulting.